Hello, everybody, and welcome back once more to Anime Yay or Nay. I am the Outback Al. I'm NB Jitters. I'm Sharon Cosplay. And I'm Cozy. And we're back with the last week of Pride Month, which wasn't supposed to be the last week of Pride Month, but then I wanted my weekend back, and so it's going to be the last week of Pride Month, and then next week will be something that's not Pride Month, but is also kind of Pride You know what? We will get to it when we get to it. Anyway, we watched uh, Wandering Sun this week. <laughs> and, uh, Cozy, this was your recommendation. Was this, uh, this came yes, out it was. 13 years ago? Do you watch it when it came out, or was it more recent for you? Oh, I read the manga. Ah, okay. So, I guess immediately my question would be, how does it compare? It starts a lot later than the manga does. Really? Okay. Well, we'll have to get into that whenever we talk plot a little bit. So, my first time, I've said that it multiple times. Who else? Uh, this is mine. Yep. Okay. So, and you said you read the manga, but did you watch the anime before this, or is it new? Were you kind of new? No. Here? No? Okay. So we're all kind of new to this show specifically. Yes. All right, cool. So, I mean, first impressions, I'm wondering how this is going to be whenever you tell me a little bit more about where the manga starts, because I was a little off and on with it. I kind of thought the first episode was a little eh, but then it got to the, like, halfway to the middle, and it was like, oh, stuff is actually starting to happen. That's a little more interesting. And then the second episode also kind of hit me with... Okay, and then the third episode was like, okay, plot again. This is kind of nice. So I'm like, I'm a little half and half on it because I'm like, okay, this is either following a pattern of like dipping into boring and interesting over and over again, or it's going to start getting better from here. So yeah, not not entirely sure yet. It is very slice of life. Yeah. It is very just focusing on the trans experience. So oh. especially if trans, or not trans, if a uh, slice of life isn't really your thing, I think we have said it's. I not. feel like this is also, yeah, <laughs> this is also going to be very not up your alley because not only is it slice of life, it relies entirely on you caring very deeply for not these characters' regular lives, but like you know they're just trying to be normal. Right. We can, and I want to get into that whenever we talk plot a little more in depth uh other people's first impression i mean if you're you're already talking you might as well give us your first impression of how i guess this uh did you like how they did this i mean i don't like where they started i feel hmm. like you don't know who these people are why would you give a fuck about what's going on you know yeah but i mean it's pretty faithful otherwise okay i like that they use like really soft colors hmm like, nothing is, like, overly harsh in the animation, you know? I like the animation style. I like the color pastel, watercolor kind of animation style. I will say I appreciate that the anime is, you know, trying to tackle, you know, transgender topics and stuff like that. I will say, though, I did kind of... Even as someone who has gotten into Slice of Life for the last couple of years... I did find these three episodes a little slow with the pacing wise, but I think that was just kind of like the, the pacing itself, not the subject matter. So that's just, I think that's my only real complaint. See, the thing is, is like they, they started it after like a huge point of like climax and conflict, which is such a weird choice. Sounds like it. So are there not, like, all these little flashback scenes then? I mean, they showed, like, one. Do you think that, I mean, uh, again, I guess none of us know how this thing was adapted overall. Do you think it's possible that they're going to redo the whole backstory sections that they didn't cover in flashback? I, I don't think so. I don't think it's long enough. Yeah, it is only, like, 11 episodes. Like, they have whole... This was supposed to start... When they were, like, six or seven. Okay. And, like, it goes through, like, a whole arc in elementary school where they meet all their other friends. Because, like, you can kind of get the vibes that, like, uh, Shuichi and... Oh, fuck. I was having a lot of trouble with, like, same face, and I was having trouble connecting which characters were who, so could you describe them a little more without just the name? <laughs> Trans girl, trans boy. Okay. All right. We can do that. They, they were kind of like the main characters of the show. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. The whole series is supposed to start when they meet. Okay. 
I don't know where the rest of this is going necessarily, but I do think that probably would have helped a little bit. Yeah, I, I agree with the, the same faciness of it. That was like my only real issue, I think. Slice of life, um, man. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, it, the, the whole first episode, I thought that the two main characters were like the same person <laughs> until they ran into each other. <laughs> and then it wasn't until they were wearing their summer uniforms that Tata, Tata, you don't look at me. Tatsuki? Takiyaki. Takiyaki, yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I know that that's a food. Whatever For once I know a Japanese word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, wait, why is he wearing a skirt? And then I was like, oh, oh, that one's the trans boy egg. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I think... As far as I guess we, we can talk plot a little bit, uh, this is it, it's slice of life, so plot is somewhat minimal. A lot of what I saw was mostly some petty middle school bullshit slice of life stuff. Uh, but when it actually got yeah. into what I have to assume is more of the meat of the story, was a little bit more interesting. We have uh, a, a trans girl kind of learning about themselves and presenting more feminine and uh, a trans boy trying to present more masculine or at least thinking about it a little bit. I don't know how it, I have to think that this, this show has to move quickly because it's short, but at the same time, it's like, how long, how long was the manga overall? Or is it still ongoing? Oh no, it's done. Oh, okay. Mm. How many volumes do you think? I could look this up. What am I, I doing? I mean, I don't remember exactly how long, but... <laughs> 15 volumes. 15 volumes. It yeah. went for 11 years. Yeah, um, I was like, it went for a while because it covered up until they went to college. Oh, wow. I can't imagine that we're getting there in this series unless they're doing some heavy time skipping. Yeah, I think because you were you were saying that like, this is supposed to start in elementary school where you get to maybe get to meet them and learn a little bit more about who they are before we get to the, hey, life kind of sucks because of these various reasons that I'm kind of going through. And like, although I do think the the scenes in episode one with that are good with, um, name, trans girl. Notori? Nit Is that their last name? Notori, yeah. Okay, yeah, with Notori like trying on uh, the wig and the, the feminine clothes and all that, and then their sister finding them and having that whole breakdown between the two of them and running out into the night and all that. I thought that was great, but if I knew who this character was, I'd probably care a lot more is the problem. There was a lot more there, too. Yeah? Because Shuichi's grandmother was actually very accepting of who she was and very supportive and then like she's passed on already by that point and like the sister isn't necessarily like not accepting she's jealous because her boyfriend came over and was hitting on Shuichi when he thought Shuichi was like her little sister which she is but <laughs> yeah and then, like, he, he, like, was really nasty about it when he found out mm. Shuichi was uh, assigned male at birth. And because he wasn't accepting was why his sister became less accepting. Yeah, like I said, that's some middle school bullshit right there. <laughs> like, I'm just going to have yeah. whatever my significant other's opinion is going to be because I've never been in a relationship before kind of thing. I'd imagine if they might, we might see the grandmother in flashbacks. That feels very much like a slice of life flashback setup, at least in my opinion. So there's possibilities. And they also kind of glossed over a little bit that I guess uh, Shuichi, um, um, the the bitch in the class, I forget her name. Is it uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Chiba. Chiba. Yeah. 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 Apparently she confessed to her and then she and then Shuichi confessed to Yoshino so that kind of created an awkward love triangle that kind of ruined their friendship they kind of just 
glossed over that a little bit. You're left to pick up the pieces later on in the episodes, too, with that. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm talking about, about some middle school bullshit. Kind of feels like what the whole second episode is about, and I'm just like, okay, I'm tuning out at this point. And see, there's a lot there that you're missing out on. Because, mm. like, Chiba, from the moment they all kind of, like, met, has been, like, obsessed with Shuichi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that sense. And to the point of, like, we saw the scene where she was trying to pressure her to get dressed in feminine clothes while they were working together. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That happened many more times when they were young. And okay. Shuichi always kind of, like, expressed uh, discomfort with, like, how obsessed she was with her transition and forcing her to be out. Okay. And that loses a lot of its impact in that moment. Yeah. Because, like, in, they do that in episode three, and I kind of got the sense of they're, like, kind of like the friend who kind of overcompensates a little bit in the moment. But, like, that would put it in a very different light that creates a lot more interesting things. Speaking of episode three, I did think it was more interesting as we started to get an actual plot that had to do with the subject matter more. Like, that was more interesting to me. Okay, we're going to have a play, and there's going to be... Uh, it's going to be kind of exploring what the actual characters are thinking and feeling and what's going on with them, as opposed to just, you didn't say hi to me in the hall. I hate you. Yeah, that was... That Certainly was, I gotta be real, plot. that that was a waste that of an episode. That was middle school drama. I fucking hate it. It's boring. We all went through it. No one cares <laughs> anymore. That is the slice of life. And again, you are supposed to care about these characters. And it's about, it's supposed to be about their struggle to be perceived as normal. Okay. That, interesting. And yet at the same time, it feels like, I don't know, maybe I missed it and I felt like it wasn't the focus. Because... You know what? It's probably me. I slice of life is not my thing, and I do zone out a little bit whenever it starts to get into petty bullshit. I did like. Uh, I mean, they kind of touched on it in all three episodes, but in episode three, I do kind of like Shuichi and the friend. Uh, Was it Makoto Aragi or Aragi or Raga or something Glasses? like that? I like how. Yeah, the yes. guy, the person. Awesome. Glasses. Glasses. Okay. Yeah, I was, totally was going to say I like I like how. Yeah, I like how they're best friends, and they're both kind of transitioning together and you know it was funny too whenever it was whenever they whenever the boyfriend rang the bell the the the, the sister was like you hide you glasses open the door four eyes I mean, four honestly, eyes yeah, yeah four eyes yeah but again like you're missing a lot of impact there because the reason she doesn't want the boyfriend to see shuichi is because the boyfriend was coming over to see her to go on a date and instead chose to hit on her little sister. I mean, get yourself a better boyfriend for one thing. <laughs> and just Yeah, that's stop. already weird. Yeah. Even removing, like, the not get out trans kid. <laughs> I mean, I think it's it's not the worst. They're, like, what, a year apart? It's not the worst, yeah, like a year worst thing, but, like, it still is a little, like... It's oh, okay. scumbaggy. You know, I was thinking she was in high school for some reason. No, no. I think they specifically okay. say they're all in middle school because they were like, hey, I went to this elementary school. So I think that I'll was be honest. I thought they were twins. Taking... Um, no. 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 She's like a year and a half older. Yeah, it definitely. she definitely gives older sister vibes. Also, she has a job as a model. And I think they were referring to them as juniors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I so... did not make the connection that you could use the same labels in other schooling. Yeah, so they're yeah, because like... Yeah, they're three years. Yeah. So what would that be the equivalent for us at like 8th grade or something? Mm. Three, so three years of high school, three years of middle in, like, school. So seven. Freshman, yeah. junior, senior. I would put senior. her like maybe in 7th grade. Well, no, because 7th grade would be freshman for, for middle school. Because I think they have... It's it's one through six is elementary. You know what? Doesn't matter. She's she's middle I'll grade. Go, I'll Google it. <laughs> she's middle grade for middle school and and uh yeah. I will say this, as far as an actual fight between siblings, regardless of what it's about, it did feel very real. Cause I have definitely had fights with my siblings here and there, with my one sibling. And yeah. Oh yeah. And then I in the the 
sharing a room, man. That's got to be rough. Yeah. I didn't have to do that past the age of four. So I'm fortunate there. But yeah. I also kind of like the little, uh, my sister gave me their extra shrimp. And it's like, that also feels very sibling. It's like, hey, we're cool, but I will not say the words, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Yeah, and she is also, like, <sighs> there is, like, a redemption arc for the boyfriend. And, like, she is very much, I will make fun of you because you are my sibling. Yeah. But if someone else makes fun of you, I'm going to punch them in the dick. Yeah, that's good. Happy about that. That's because that's that's real. You, I will fuck with my brother as much as I want, but anyone else fucks with him, I'm coming for you. To be fair, he's actually taller than me, so we'll both be coming for whoever's coming after him. <laughs> we also, I don't know if it would have been the next episode or the episode after, but we got to miss out on a really, really sweet moment where they were kind of talking about how they wanted Shuichi to be Romeo, who wants to be Juliet, and then what's his name to be Juliet wanting to be Romeo. So they kind of like psych us out into thinking that that's who's going to be cast. But Shuichi goes out of his way to make sure it's Makoto who gets it. Who's Makoto? The other trans girl. Oh, okay. The one with the glasses. glasses. Right. Glasses. Okay. <laughs> like, the art style's beautiful. And it's very calming and I like it and it mixes with the music very well to be, be a very, like, honestly calming watch experience, I think. At the same time, though, it's slice of life, same face, and we don't even have the one advantage slice of life she usually gives us, which is like, people have different colored hair. So, I'm, yeah. I'm out of luck on We this need episode. some blue hair bitches up in here. <laughs> I, I need some purples, I need some greens, I need all the weird stuff to, to balance that. But then it would be less realistic and probably harder to connect to on a on a more personal level, maybe. I don't know. But. Um, it looks like they're about seventh uh, and ninth grade. Okay. I'm trying to think here. Yeah, so that was actually where, where the plot started to get back in interesting again, where it's like, okay, I, I kind of like the little setup for more interesting drama that you have. You have the, they're trying to write the play which has a lot more to do with the characters than maybe the rest of the class understands yet. And you have the the different interpersonal love triangle dynamics of the people writing it, the people trying to cast it, and then you're also saying that there's going to be other people involved with casting and stuff. I'm like, this seems like it's going in a really interesting place. But at the same time, I'm also worried it's going to dip. I forgot. You forgot? Um, we're also missing a very key component of this story. How much shit did they cut? Which is... <laughs> well, in essence, the entirety of the manga is told in flashback. Okay. Because right. this is Shuichi writing her life story as a biography. Because she was inspired by this moment with the school festival and realized she loved writing and wanted to become an author. That's interesting. But you miss all of that because we don't have this as a flashback. It feels like had they wanted to tell the story right, maybe they should have had a longer series to do it, but at the same time, I'm wondering if they so, could have funded that. I am very surprised it even got made into an anime, or that the serialization could carry on as long as it did. Yeah, because it- Because this was banned for a while. It came out in 2002. And then this anime came out in 2011. Whoa. I can only speak to what I know of America and the sort of situation that the, the subject accepted. matter has. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I got to figure Japan, uh, I, 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 from the stuff we've seen this month. Marriage not, equality not isn't wonderful. even a thing over there yet. Yeah, okay, so. Honestly, but, um, kind of impressive at this yeah, point. Yeah, this was banned for a while. I could see that. So, like, the fact it got an anime at all was actually kind of surprising to me. I do know, uh, especially with a lot of, like, the trans community, it either really resonates or it doesn't because of, like, one specific plot point towards the end. It always is a plot point right at the end, isn't it? Do we want to talk for a second about last week? 
Yeah. Um, you put it in the comments, but we might as well say what here. happened. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, rape that goes on in a given in the second arc. And then, it's like, it, it's, oh, it's not good. And he's like, he raped me because he loved me. The and I'm fuck. like, what the fuck? That's a, that's a hell of a decision to make for your characters, my guy. And it went, like, full into, like, scene with it like it showed it Oof. and them having sex like later on so like you have now removed like the hey we didn't exploit them for like people getting off sexually to we very much have yeah and i really enjoyed the whole like 12 episode series of that it did not hit any of that in the middle it was your drummer boy and that's what pisses me off the most because I liked him the best. I I don't think you guys would have... Well, I don't so know like, if... there are also people in the fandom who try to justify it because they're oh, like, boy. oh, he was basically whoring himself out. Uh, he only sees himself in terms of sex. I'm like, that doesn't... Wow. That does okay. not equate to like forcefully performing a sexual act on someone else. Because you think they'll kick you out if you don't? Yoy. Uh, yeah, it, it was not good. Uh, but that that is not the kind of issue the end of this series has, if we don't really care about spoilers. Oh, goody gumdrops, it doesn't go that far. No, so, um, I don't know if you noticed, but there are, like, a very diverse cast of characters when it comes to, like, gender expression. Yes, just not show. with their faces. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... At the end of the series, Yoshino actually, as they get older, decide, no, I don't think I am actually a boy. Like, I did not feel comfortable with society's dictations of what a woman was, but that did not make me a boy. And okay. detransitions. And, and a lot... Are they gender fluid or something? Or No. She was just a boyish girl she was ah, just a tomboy gotcha. but because there is a very rigid idea of what women are especially in japan when this came out yeah she never felt like she actually fit the idea of what a woman was supposed to be which is where her dysphoria was coming from because mm. she does she does transition to male for a while okay and she transitions and is like, why am I not happy? Why is this still making me miserable? And she ends up like going through like this whole arc right at the end. And it's actually really sweet because like the opening of the biography Shuichi's writing for herself was, there was a boy that wanted to be a girl. There was a girl that wanted to be a boy. And then, like, they bring that back in the closing. And he was like, and the boy became the girl, but the girl decided she did not want to be a boy. And that's all there was to it. And it was like a really sweet ending where they, like, talked about it. And it's very complicated subject matter. Oh, definitely. But for the only like trans male representation they had in the series, a lot of people felt very bitter about it. And like they were invalidating like the trans male identity. I guess I can kind of see that. But at the same time, isn't that like just kind of a thing that can happen sometimes? I mean, especially for like people this young, they're figuring out a lot of things about themselves, even beyond this already complicated issue that they're gonna probably yeah. go back and forth on constantly and and change up. I mean, like, how many different and, phases know, did you did people go through in middle school and high school? I mean, like, we're completely different people almost every single year, almost. And you know, oh, yeah. she went through like this phase of like, I can't actually be a woman because like, this is how I relate to all my friends this is how I relate to like arguably my best friend. This is what we connect over. If I'm still a woman, I will have been lying to them. It, it was very poignant and like, hmm. I get that it can be like disappointing that like 
they removed the trans male representation at the very end. But also, like, I feel like that is a discussion of, you know, these things do happen in the community and it's okay that it does. There's like no shame around it. Or at least there shouldn't be. Yeah. I mean, to some degree, you never stop figuring out who you are. Like, and that's for anyone, really. Like, there's a... I, I, I occasionally try to think of, like, well, who was I some years ago? Or what was I doing? Or what was I thinking? Where would, like... You occasionally see, like, Facebook keeps, like... We go, hey, you remember this post from, like, 15 years ago? And I'm like, can <laughs> I just like, oh, not have that exist anymore? That would be super... <laughs> Why are you reminding me of that yeah, part of my life? Yeah, those posts from 10 years ago are yeah. like, <laughs> your first year in college, and you're like, ugh. Yeah, like, Literally right before I jumped on Discord, I got a notification that my grandma liked a post from 2016 on Facebook. I'm like, ugh, thanks, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see posts like that, too, and I think about, like, wow, I must have been really different back then to say stuff like that <laughs> yeah but like i think that is a thing of like you know even if it's not every single year you're changing everything about yourself like everything's gradual in that but like there's something about even biologically like over the course of seven years all the blood in your body will be completely different from what it was seven years ago or something like that i mean didn't it's they say the that you your body. yeah and in I mean, didn't they say your brain doesn't fully develop until, like, you're 25 or something like that? That anyway. as well. But, like, yep. even beyond that, if you're not changing some stuff about yourself constantly or constantly, like, learning something about yourself, what are you doing, in a way? You know what I mean? Like, you're stagnating. Yeah. Man, we're getting I... deep in this episode. <laughs> I mean, uh, hey. It, it dealt... It... It's a series that deals like it. It's boring. I will give you that. It yeah, is it's boring, slice of life. We gotta talk about something. When you have no, when you have no emotional investment in these characters, but it cannot be said. It does not deal with very heavy and real aspects of life, which also isn't everyone's cup of tea. Because mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times entertainment is like your escape. But yep. Yeah. I mean, I said at the beginning that I applaud this series, especially in anime in what 2010 when this came out or something like that mm. to talk about transgender stuff like was the author of the manga trans or know anybody that was trans do you know that i am not sure i think she's just a woman but uh, there is an older woman who i think we briefly saw an episode two who could be like a self-insert yeah their wikipedia page is about three paragraphs long and covers nothing of their personal life Okay, so she also did Sweet Blue Flowers, which actually I know Chibi has read, which also deals with lesbianism and transgender topics, which, uh, spoiler, Shuichi ends up being a lesbian. So, like, there was an aspect of her invalidating Yoshino's identity by crushing on her while she still thought Yoshino was a boy. Sorry, uh, names don't work for me? Who on who and what? <sighs> <laughs> I'm trans sorry. Girl a crushing girl. on okay. Trans girl who was crushing on who she thought was a trans boy, but trans girl was actually a lesbian the entire time. Okay. So like it was slightly invalidating of trans boys' identity. I guess a little bit. But um, she must be. She must be some flavor of LGBTQ, IA plus plus alphabet soup. Mm. Who doesn't like alphabet soup? I'm allowed soup? to make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's a message in my alphabet soup. It says, ooh. Peter, those are Cheerios. <laughs> it says... <laughs> oh. <laughs> it says, you're gay. <laughs> no, it was a Simpsons joke. Yeah. Family guy. That was a family guy joke. <laughs> I realized that too late. Uh, also, there were definitely moments that I had forgotten about in the series that were like a little weird. Especially considering how young they're supposed to be here. Like, the older woman, the older trans woman, Yuki. Like, she straight up goes to Yoshino like, Yeah, no, I was trying to hit on you when I first met you. And they met her when they were in middle school. And her boyfriend wanting to make sure that Yoshino was not an actual, like, assigned male at birth. 
like looked at her crotch to see if he could see a bulge, which divulging into very weird and uncomfortable territory. Was this the- But they didn't have that here because they didn't cover that. Was this? I thought they had a conversation like that in episode. Was that the one who bought uh them the boys uniform? The Yes. Yes. That is Yuki. Okay. She she is a trans woman who runs a cafe that they met while they were like younger. And she's supposed to be like their positive trans adult influence. How old are they? They're hanging out with a middle schooler. He graduated college already, owns a business. Yoi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I think I only saw them briefly. So. Like it's it's yeah. one thing to have a mentor, but. Yeah. And you know what? Like, she she's not weird beyond that, like, initial interaction of, like, haha, I was jokingly hitting on you. But, like, the boyfriend just took it, like, one step too far in the weird direction, you know? I gotta be honest with you. I thought, like, when she was that, talking about that in the cafe, I thought she was talking about some other couple that she had walked in on. And at this point, I thought that that, uh, that kid was about Totino? What was his name? <laughs> we have just different <laughs> forms of food. <laughs> Specifically on these snacks. Oh. Too bad that they're in middle school or else I could make the joke. It's because they're snacks. Yeah, I, I still thought that uh, that those were the same person. So when that scene happened, I was like, why is he so happy about getting the boy's uniform? Is this like a school acceptance thing? <laughs> like, oh, congrats. You made it into that middle school. I bought your uniform for you. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, for me, I feel like I'm missing a lot of context for a lot of these characters. And that might be my yeah. largest problem here. Yeah, same. Yeah, again, I I question why they started it where they did, and how much it actually can even cover with how short of an actual season it is, you know? Do you think they were expecting to get more seasons? No, but, like, it's still, like, a weird choice, you know? Yeah. I wonder about this, because it's possible this could be something that happens similarly to a different series. If you guys remember, in 1993, there was an adaptation of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It was six episodes long, oh, yeah. and they literally only covered where they show up in Cairo to fight Dio. Which yeah, is a small the part of, of a, Crusaders. yeah, which is a small part of a much larger saga. And then years later, they did another six episodes or seven episodes covering the first half of Stardust Crusaders. <laughs> Even then, still very condensed. But why did they do that? Because it was the most popular part of the manga that was out at that time. Is it possible that maybe they were doing this? Because is this the most popular section of the manga? Maybe. Mm -hmm. No, I think high school had a lot more coverage. I feel like that probably would be the more popular one. It's anime. Everything has to be in high school. Yeah. Maybe it's just this was the easiest to condense into a short series. Well, yeah, because throughout middle school, uh, they go very on again, off again. So, like, there are a lot of time skips. Okay. But, like, high school, we deal with, like, Bullies, like, coming around, having change of hearts, realizing they were shitty little gremlins. Like, we have a lot of personal evolution in relationships. Okay. We have Yoshino and Shuichi both trying to actually, like, present as their gender at school. Like, a lot changes in high school. I guess that would be even harder to show without the context as well. Oh, also, uh, Pigtail Girl? Uh-huh. Uh, they did not, like, they very briefly mentioned this, but, like, because she felt so guilty about, like, obsessing over a trans woman, she converted into, like, uber-Christianity. Oh, Which fun. we only got, like, the starting peak of, where that one guy was at her house, and he's like, well, you haven't been to church lately. I'm looking at the episode list. It looks like it only goes through the school festival 
maybe two school festivals in middle school. No, that makes sense because like the school festival takes a lot to put together. Right. And again, like it has a very sweet like culmination to the storyline. I would hope so. And it also leaves off on a very positive note, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's where they like left it, you know? Well, yeah. if that's the case, it might be good to see the rest of this. Though, pacing-wise, how did the manga feel in comparison to this? Because was I on the spot a little bit with it being like, hey, we're going to have a plotty episode, and then a boring one, and then a plotty episode, and then a boring one. So the thing about manga is like pacing is always inherently different to anime. True. Because you can kind of set it yourself. I understand that. You only read as fast or as slow as you want. <laughs> what I'm kind of talking about is what's more, what, did it feel like they were doing more, hey, here's plot and then we're going to have a couple episodes of drama that is pointless. Okay, so... Actually, I do like you asked this question. No, nothing felt pointless because the actual beauty of this series was that everything was down to like the small little hidden details mm. because everything was interconnected. Everything they did had some sort of relevance. Okay. So I'll get more out of episode two if I watch the rest of them. Oh, maybe. You want to put some money on it? Um, one, of, one of the things that I think we can't appreciate as much because it's in Japanese and some of us do not really know a lot of Japanese. I learned Takayaki today. <laughs> it's octopus balls, by the way. Sick. I meant the other one. Testicles. Taiyaki? Taiyaki. That's a oh no, maybe Takayaki. Google it. I'll just Google it. <laughs> yeah, yeah Takoyaki is the, uh, the Takoyaki is the octopus, right? I think so. And then I think Taiyaki is the fish. Takoyaki is the octopus balls, and then Taiyaki is the ice cream fish. That is what I meant to say. <laughs> Anyways, um, the pronouns they're using throughout the entirety of the show and how they're addressing each other is one of like those little intricate details that we can't fully appreciate because like for the girl that came in in the boys uniform she exclusively refers to herself in a gender neutral pronoun uh just for my own for, like uh, understanding of this do you mean pronouns or honorifics that they always slap onto the end of a name pronouns okay pronouns all right Japanese has way more pronouns than we do. Shuichi only refers to herself with the pronouns specifically used for like young boys, even well into like her high schoolness when she should have switched over to like a more formal male pronoun. And then Yoshino also uses a very like gender neutral one because there are like two separate ones and one is like I'm gender dead and the that other an is like I want that in English <laughs> and the other is like I am anything and everything however you perceive me it doesn't matter and like it's just one of like those things where we don't notice it and we're kind of like at the mercy of the translation, you know? Yeah. But like, if you speak or read Japanese, it's much more impactful. Um, I did notice, at least the uh, sub we were watching, the tall one only referred to themselves by name. Yeah, that like, is Like, they also... never showed pronouns. And I felt like that was a deliberate choice. It was. She is the one who is like, I am gender dead. Dead. You mean like a gender? Like, do not perceive me. Yeah. Like, there is nothing that applies to me. Like, I am outside the gender binary. I am beyond your concepts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think. I think that was most of what I wanted to say. Does anyone else have anything to, they want to cover here? No. All right. Uh, then I think overall here, I'm a light yay. I think presentation is lovely from a visual and audio standpoint. I think 
Mostly, my issues tend to come from plot and a general genre thing that I'm just not particularly a fan of. So overall, a light yay. I might still watch some of this just to see where it does go, even kind of at this point knowing that it's not going to go as far as maybe I would prefer it to. But, eh. I'm kind of a high meh. Kind of the same thing that Al, same things that Al said. But yeah, I'm just kind of. I was just kind of. I, I don't know. I I don't want to say I was bored, but I was just kind of like, I was whelmed. I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't underwhelmed, but I was just kind of whelmed. Well, you had no reason to be invested. I'll give it a full yay. I do agree with what you guys are saying. It is kind of slow. It is a little hard to tell the characters apart, but it's really cute, and I really enjoyed saying the story about all these little eggs. <laughs> little what? Why are we eggs? Eggs? Uh. That's the term for, uh, like, specifically trans people that don't know they're trans yet. Oh. Uh. But they do know they're trans. Or they don't know where they're not out yet. Okay. It sounds a little bit better than There's in the closet whole... sometimes. Maybe. There's a whole subreddit about it. I would be like a full yay if this were the manga. Uh, I am leaning more light yay to like a meh feeling on the anime. I feel like weird choice on what to cover. And I'm sure it's because there are a lot of constraints on what they could produce reasonably at the time but like there's just no reason for you to be invested when you have started in the middle of the story and you don't know these characters when it is such a character centric show but like overall for like lgbt rep as a series like mm, fucking a plus delicious so we should check out the manga you should check out the manga all right well yeah. That's something to check out, at the very least. So, we were going to have uh, another one for this month, but then we moved things to Monday and all that sort of thing. So next week starts, uh, or is going to be July. And what else are we going to do in July? But Murica Month! Uh, we gotta have... Murica. I'm just going to say, the whole theme behind uh, next month is... is did you guys ever see the meme of, like, Lieutenant Surge and Vanda Keith and, like, Guile from Street Fighter and, and uh, it's something along the lines of, be the American the Japanese think you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that is a concept that's hilarious to me. So, next month we're going to be doing uh, all, all of the most uh, American-y anime that I was able to find, but we need a transition between this month and next month, and uh, our options are limited, so... <laughs> Uh, we're going to be watching Banana Fish, which is set primarily in America, involves some people who are gay, and is not Italia. So, yeah. <laughs> which one do you want more? Which one do you want more? Which one do you want more? No, neither are good transitions. I'm which one's worse? Right, okay. Which one's worse? <laughs> I mean, in Italia, you don't have rape. I don't think we'll get there in the first three episodes. I, yes, oh. you do. Well, fuck me, I mean, Ryan. The whole series starts on being raped as a child. Well, no one said it was a happy series. Repeatedly enforced into prostitution. No one said it was a happy series. But it's in July. So, yeah, come back for Banana Fish. And then we'll probably let you guys know all the other fun shows, probably more fun shows that we'll be watching. Uh, for the rest of that month. <laughs> so come back for that and everything else we got going on. We'll see you guys then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoy this video, give us a like, and if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time.